Hi and welcome to this video. This is an introduction of a video that I've shot about, about 18 years ago today, this is 2021, uh, 20 years ago, and that's basically a recording of everything that I've done to locate the large catfish in, in Southern Africa, uh, the research I've done, uh, all the technical tech talk, the stuff that people ask me till today, every day, where to catch the big catfish, how to catch them, what the terminal tackle looks like, what rods to use, what strength of line to use, and all of that. So so sit back and enjoy uh, the tech talk, and if there's any other uh, information that you require, please leave it in the comments or on my Facebook page and so on, but sit back and enjoy the For almost three decades, I've been photographing and fishing South Africa's beautiful and wild places. Me and my boys have been doing fishing films and capturing wildlife and landscape photographs for about the same time. Captain, you've hooked the love! <laughs> for this series, I've dusted off my old footage and revisited some of the old spots. To do that, I had to open my photo and fishing diaries. there would be spare spools, there would be exactly the same gear as the specimen carp would use, um, for instance the carp marker that, would, um, that we would use to identify the type of bottom if you can't get, or the battery for instance flat that you can't see with the fish finder what the, what the bottom looks like, we still use the same equipment um, and then the rest of the stuff is uh, the super glue that comes in handy everywhere, porcupine quills, pipes, little corks, exactly the same as the specimen guys. This container would contain my indicators, my alarms, and also the feeder, the bum feeder, spare little batteries for the indicators or the hooters. The typical float I use for the cats is uh, a bit larger than the average one. The line is pushed through, that's that, and that will be a very nice indicator. And then also the, the small, just a bit larger than this one for the cats and the rivers. With regards to the rods, reels, line and terminal tackle, um, first I would introduce you to the type of rods that that I prefer. These, um, like I've mentioned before, is the two types that I specifically like. It is um, at the bottom the, the Quantum big, uh, big Cat Rod and the ECAT series of, of Berkeley on top. Very nice rods. As you can see, very similar in make. The same seats used, basically the same seat length holding length, the eyes very similar in size and in strength and very important very strong first eyes specifically the, uh, the quantum look at the uh, size of the quantum's um, front eye very important to make sure that those are always clean and uh, causes no abrasion on the on the line or additional abrasion on the line. The strength of these two rods are, are basically very similar. The the quantum rod is obviously a bit more 
affordable, but I can assure you um, I've been terribly surprised. And I don't think there's any difference if one um, look at the, the manufacturing. That those are those are both the catfish. The ecat weight um, is a seven foot six. The quantum is also a seven foot six. It is a one to five ounce. The catfish on top, one to five ounce, twenty to forty pound line breaking line. The um, the quantum is a two to five line weight fifteen to forty. Uh, the action is medium to heavy. One also get the quantum in the heavy, which is a 40 to 80 pound line rod. Very nice rod for the for the big cats and uh, the one I recommend uh, for African conditions. These are the general uh, general rods that one use. Um, very nice to fight the big cats with if there's not a lot of a lot of obstacles. But with the um, I I put the 80 pound line on these rods with the. Um, smaller one or the 40 15 to 40 pound rod I would have the normal pin reel with a, a 50 pound uh, breaking line breaking strain line on on this and um, that's obviously where there's where we don't fish that far away um, we can get up to 150 200 meters where we just get to the other side or you fish from the raft or the boat at night directly short um, short fighting distance I um, then use this a bit larger reels. This is the Polakensky, not too popular with the with the sea fishermen. Um, remember, all we need is um, is a reel that holds line, that holds line, and that the bearings are basically strong enough not to seize on us. This uh, specific reel we don't use to cast with. That's the other advantage. So you don't have to have a specific reel that that is. Um, um, quite a famous caster, it holds line, the line is the most important, we get by the best line, the strongest line, we make sure that there's no abrasion or no marks on the line, and basically this is a fighting gear, we don't use the clutch, um, we just bring it in. We go one up, and for the for the larger, or for the very large catch, if, if you want to go for the record, one rod would be the, the 40 to the 80 pound um, breaking strain rod, and there we'll use a, a 12 Center to line with um, the 80 pound breaking strain strain line that I've showed you earlier on as my basis of my line. We also use fire wire. Um, you obviously get about 50% more line on the reel if you use fire wire and specifically on the 80 pound breaking class. With regards to the um, utility bag or the um, specialized bag that I take with, it will have It'll be of the normal backpacking size, a bit smaller, where I would have, for instance, a small container of, of wet ones, a little bit of flies to catch bait for the catfish, a waterless hand clean cleanser without order. We can't take chances with having flavors and all that things on our hands. Um, thin nylon wire to hold the nets or to hold the fishing rods to trees, etc. A hook sharpener, cable ties, strap yourself to the boat for the big ones, climbing clips, clip yourself to the boat, clip yourself to trees if you need to take the bait in from the from the ledges, sometimes you can't get the boat to the water and uh, you have to get to the other side and then drop the bait down the, the, um, the crances or embankments. Um, Typical seam sealer for the tent if it starts to rain or to seal the raft quickly. Um, lighter of the type of the type like a blowtorch that can also do a bit of welding, welding or soldering, but probably the best lighter that you can take with for the bush. There's all sorts of small goodies uh, immediately. Pen light batteries for the GPS's, little teaspoons to make the quick coffee. Obviously, you don't want to open the big container where all the pots and the pans and the spoons are in, so this bag should contain basically everything. Um, if you stop along the banks to do a, to do a, a quick fly fishing uh, a spree, or you need to um, quickly prepare food for the uh, people that you take out, you have the typical gas, uh, gas burners of, um, of the MR type, 
would be the best tool that you can get in the world. The guys that mountain climbers are familiar with those, or the typical mountain gas kettles. Uh, a small little lighter of mountain climbing equipment. A little container like this, um, I take about 10 on each trip, which lasts me a, a week. Um, with this little lighter, uh, it lasts about 8 hours non-stop, so I go about 2 nights with one of these per, per light. Um, the cooking is done on, on the benzene. Very efficient, very effective. Um, and a container like this cooks for for five people for about five nights. We have a variety of rags. We have rolls of rags going with, seeing that sometimes it's a very unhygienic story with the with the bait. If the fish don't bite, you bring out the bait that lies for two nights. It is it is septic and any little scratch on your on your hands um, gets infected. Um, your hands on the outside gets infected with um, with the catfish tooth and so on and, and any unhygienic condition or contaminated piece of food actually affects you and makes you sick quickly. Um, headlamp, impossible to fish without a headlamp and superfluous. Everyone's got to have this that goes on a trip with us. We have um, the dehydrated food, very light. Um, this is a specific one, is a baboti. Absolutely divine and totally underestimated. But Bertie, this one serves one, you get the ones that serves two, you just boil water with, and it, so, uh, it tastes like mother's babuta, I can assure you. 49 rand at once, it's about 55 now. Uh, as it gets more popular in South Africa, maybe the price comes down, we don't know. But this, uh, for an exploration trip, if you go and you try and find catfish, pack three days of food like this, it's very light, it really is. Thirty plus sunblock. I don't need to explain that. Anyone that knows something about Africa knows that um, on that Namibian border, um, we get temperatures in the rock there up to 51, 55 degrees, and the rock face and the the sand that you fish from um, gets um, as hot as 75 degrees Celsius. And uh, sealant tape for the boxes. I take loads of, of um, um, watertight bags, for instance this specific bag that gets put in one of those, all the fishing bags get put in one of those, all the crates get put in one of those, the camera gear each one of those to protect those, um, those waters that come in into the boat through splashes or unforeseen methods. All those. There's all sorts, um, more Suntan lotion and environmental, mentally friendly soap. Tackle guard. Uh, Q20 as it was known, Q40 today, but this um, is a very good product. And um, from time to time and after rain and so on, I, I like to clean up the reels and, and all the moving parts and spray them with tackle guard. Spotlight. Not too big, not too large, but still 800,000 candlelight. Works straight off the battery, deep cycle battery, that uh, gets charged every night um, by the generator that goes with. Surgical gloves. I use this as um, in the first couple of times that I went fishing with all the bite marks on the hands and all the bait that get, gets rotten. And, um, the petrol that you have to use, the benzene for cooking, and then you touch the bait, and it affects it really affects the productivity of the of the fish. So I tend to um, put the surgical gloves. We take about 50 pairs with on every trip, and we use surgical gloves wherever we touch the bait, anything to do with the fish, um, and as well when there's any medical condition that requires attention. With regards to the other goodie bag that goes with, um, basically the red one and the yellow one is identifiable. I tell all the clients that go with what is in that bag, I tell them what is in this bag, and this too basically stays with me. It never stays on the raft. 
if I go off the raft, it goes off with me. If I go into the tent, it goes into the tent with me. Um, I never leave these alone. This is emergency uh, bags. Like I say, adapters for the generators and for the for the cameras. Um, small little tripods to record insects. Um, loads of additional cable ties or straps to tie things to trees, to tie people to trees, to use in emergencies, they always come in handy. Extra batteries, knot, guide, this one has got a couple of openings, this specific one would look like this, we would have all the water bags I've told you about, the Kdak cylinders cleaner, the lighters fill, the cable ties as you can see I never have enough cable ties, not just to tie things to the roof and to the rafts and so on but also rails and rods and um, to fix nets that are broken etc. Always a lot of extra batteries everywhere. Lens cleaners. In this, the bottom bag, I have, for instance, the um, the antennas for the GPSs. Small um, cable ties. Empty. Empty. Plastic bags, freezer bags for bait, leftover foods, and any stuff that you need to uh, keep hygienic. Now let's get um, back to the um, angling part of it or the the technical side of it. Obviously, I've explained to you all the all the nice to haves, all the goodies. Some guys can do it with with much less. Um, and if I go closer, I must admit, if I go to a little farm dam close by then I don't have all this tackle but the point is you need to be self-sufficient in um, in areas where we go fishing and unfortunately where the big fish are holding these are great wilderness areas and as a matter of fact the area I'm talking about along the Namibian border could be regarded as probably one of the most isolated uh, pieces of fishing waters probably in the world as for probably 500 kilometers to um, 800 kilometers to 1000 kilometers you'd have less fishermen on the river than any other river besides in uh, for instance Alaska or one of the bigger continents like in Russia and so on the pressure is thus very little on the fish fish stock I can also assure you that um, if we take 20 guys or we take 30 guys on an adventure one day and we could go for 30 days non-stop um, I can basically guarantee that a 50 to 60 kilogram fish will come out of our rivers um, I've lost a 50 kilogram fish um, right on the embankment and I've lost um, another one that was very close to 50 kilograms. Uh, back to the fishing itself. To fish on the rivers uh, and, and wilderness areas or where the cat, big catfish are, I would, um, I would say that would be the, the Orange River system, and specifically from the Kharib Dam or the old Fervur Dam uh, through to the Van der Kloof Dam through to the Buchelberg Dam and then below Ugrabi's waterfalls to Oranjemund at the, the mouth of, of the sea. Very important there is, um, is to make sure that, that the fish that are hooked is removed immediately. There are obstacles in the river, the river is, um, is flowing at, at quite rapid speeds and if a catfish of, of 40 kilograms with a head this size turns sideways against the current it forms a formidable chute against the flow of the river and therefore when you hook into a fish like that the 40 kilogram fish becomes a 50 60 kilogram fish so the the line's got to be very strong the reel's got to be very strong and you can't afford to let the line go in other words the clutch go once the fish is hooked and the hook is set it's brute force that brings out the fish uh, the quicker you can get to the spot where the fish has actually swallowed the bait the better um, therefore when we hook into fish it is absolute chaos 
we use brute force. Um, I train for at least two months before I go on a trip because then I can show you once you start hooking into a lot of catfish and they bite for two days and you're not fit, um, it's going to be a big problem and you actually stop fishing. I could never fish a day and a night non-stop for a week in a productive area where there's big fish even though I was fit. Um, so what we tend to do is, is we tend to fish half, peop uh, half of the um, of the expedition would fish in the daytime and the other half would fish in the night. Obviously the night are much more productive um, but all my big fish have been caught during the day. At night you just lose more fish because uh, you can't see uh, nor on the river and not, not on the side and the people that are supposed to help you at night well they never turn up or never rock up when the reels run. Um, the line, like I say, is 80 pound um, that we use mostly. The terminal tackle 130 pound. Uh, they use um, um, fire wire or or any braid, strong braid for that matter. Um, the sinkers, I say, depending on the strength of the of the stream and where the the big fish are, are holding, we would use sinkers up to a kilogram and more just to keep the bait in the specific spot. Um, but mostly, I would. I would use an um, 8 ounce or 2 8 ounce sinkers to lay the bait down. The bait would be taken in with a with a canoe, with a boat. It would be dropped in the mouth of a drop off just in front so that the particles of the scent goes down to where the cat is lying. Obviously we detect the cat with the, um, with the fish finders or where we see the risers and we drop them just in front um, and uh, majority of the time before you get to the side the cat's hooked in. The hooks are important, it's got to be sharp. Um, if a hook is lied in the water for a half a day or for a day, we make sure, and sometimes we do slip up, we make sure that it's sharpened after every day. Um, after a week's fishing, um, we like to change the hook, we remove the hook and put newer hooks. Um, the sinkers these days, um, I'm not a favorite for the sinkers these days. In the beginning we've used a lot, but you, you also lose a lot um, as one gets older and more environmentally friendly. Um, we look for rocks, we gather the rocks and we tie rocks as weight and we make sure that when we hook uh, and the catfish goes the rock stays behind. It is not let and it does, doesn't pollute the rivers. Bait. We bait up uh, beforehand with, the, um, with a lot of maize and a lot of peanuts, exactly the same as what the specimen carp guys would do. And that is to attract in general all the fish. The more fish you attract in wild areas, um, the more the predators arrive. So if you feed up with 50 kilograms of, of, of bait, chick chick, uh, maize and peanuts, within the second day it looks like a, a jacuzzi in a wild river. You basically attract all the fish with that send 2-3 kilometers down waters within one day. And with them comes the catfish. The catfish at night follows them and they start chasing into the fish um, and that's very productive. I use um, strips of of um, carp fillet. Um, carp fillet is very popular. A lot of people use the heads of the mudfish and strips of mudfish fillet and so on. Mudfish very productive. But um, a fresh piece of carp fillet um, frozen in what you call monster crab concentrate uh, from Europe, the Hutchinson um, monster crab or what the specimen carp uh, people are selling today in the shops. Um, we soak that in monster crab, you seal it outside in a fridge, never bring it in, you'll sit with a divorce case. Um, we use that, the swan lip mussel, also a, a extract from, from, from mussels and, and so on from Europe, very expensive stuff. Um, but once you've frozen the meat in this goodies, I promise you if there's a catfish within 500 meters, it will be there within 30 seconds at your bite. Once they're there, normal fresh um, carp fillet would do very fine um, and also crushed um, or minced um, carp um, in, in stockings or, or nets to attract the cats on. Uh, once the cats are in the area, uh, we make sure that there's no additional noises, the, the generators. Uh, once we hooked into two catfish, we also stop fishing there, we leave it and we move 100 meters down or 100 meters up. Um, as I've seen, if you start fishing for three days on the same spot, you move the cats and they start biting. We very, very 
specific when it comes to noise. All our people, everyone in the party needs to be quiet when we go for cats. As a matter of fact, we start whispering when we put up our campsites. We don't like big engines. When we do use the engines, we use the five horsepower maximum, two and a half horsepower, and that's to get from one spot to the other down the river. But most of the times, um, we use the, the paddling gear, the, the canoes and the rafting equipment to take the, to take the bait in. It's obviously a hard work, um, and you get fit uh, on, on, a, on a catfish trip. Um, well, if the motors are used, they are used um, in areas where the cats don't mind them. But when we get to the side, we don't leave the boat and the engine on the river because with all engines there are a bit of fuel and, um, and oil that, that leaks into the river. We remove the boat, we clean the engine and we take it back in. Holding areas, productive areas for, for catfish. Obviously the further, you go, further away you go from um, populated areas, um, noise pollution, um, water pollution, the better the cat. We all know the cat's a survivor and um, basically an omnivore that, that lives of everything. But we've, we've, um, we've identified and observed that that is very specific. And sometimes um, we've, put a, uh, we've taken a, a kerper or tilapia with us. We've taken um, sea fish with us, fresh sea fish, the head, strips of uh, red roman and so on. We would drop them right next to a piece of fresh carp and the uh, red roman or the sea fish and the freshwater fish not from the area like the tilapia would stay for a week it would not touch it but we would drop it right next to each other so um, very specific and then on, on, on other periods and other times you can introduce a funny piece of thing like a piece of squid um, in a freshwater system that it's never seen and, a, and it would take it but I, I would not say it's because of um, the new the, the, the squid it would be because it it, it it bit on or ate something that had that flavor uh, maybe introduced in the river by by some fishermen I've explained previous that we've talked about the monster crab and the and the swan lip mussel mussel extract that we use well once you've introduced that uh, the fish get used to get used to that flavor um, sometimes the bigger fish uh, we like to use the big 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 fish uh, two three kilogram whole cops have produced very big fish but the majority of the times, uh, we've lately found that that um, our hooks um, was a bit too big, and our and our our bait was also to the three kilogram fish would lie there and would lie for a week until you get that size, but um, it would not, for instance, pick up the the thirty kilogram. would not pick the three three kilogram on. Uh, I've seen that a quarter of the weight of the catfish is swallowed once cut um, every now and then. Um, and very close to half the weight of the of the catfish is swallowed. Um, with regards to um, birds, uh, dead birds, uh, a lot of South Africans um, take the air gun or the catty and they go and shoot. Um, when they get to the waters, they shoot um, little birds, uh, put that on the hook. A lot of guys have done that. I found in the areas that I fish in the wilderness areas, it's certainly not the best fish, uh, the the best bait. Um, it doesn't produce the amount of scent and obviously in certain times if uh, in the beginning of the season and the dams for instance um, where there's uh, big dead trees and, and, and the catfish are used to, to birds very productive um, to drop the bird in the beginning of, of September in South Africa or Southern Africa to drop a bird um, but in, in general in the wilderness areas where we catch them for instance in the wilderness areas there's there's obviously not a lot of birds, it is desert, and the only water that you'd find is the water system that you'd fish in, but 300 to 400 kilometers down, 300 to 400 kilometers up, you'd have, you'd have no water. Let's talk about, um, about the behavior, the feeding habits of, um, of the catfish. We found in the beginning that in the rapids where we fish um, for yellowfish, for instance, um, on fly, uh, the ankle deep water, the rapids that, that rapid over the, over the long or wide pieces or stretches of river where the where the yellowfish and the mudfish are lying in the oxygenated or cool down water, the cats would come down at night and um, trap them from behind and swallow the fish. Um, very successful. At in the daytime, the cats would move from the rapids to the first rapid to the big deep holes, and they would lie down in the hole and relax. They don't stop eating at all. Once you introduce a piece of food, um, they would they would come out from the hole and and swallow that. 
The rapids that night we found hip high or hip deep water, put a kilogram weight, drop a strip of fish or yellow fish. We've also used artificial lure um, for that for that matter. Rapalas that lie in the stream on a one kilogram weight, very effective. The um, the catfish take them and um, you have loads of fun at night. Um, at day when they move down into the into the deeper holes, obviously the water is also cooler down at the bottom. Um, in summertime and winter, that is now once again the warmer parts of the river, and uh, the fish would also hold in that in that deep holes. So the deep holders and the shoulders of the deep holes just below the rapids is normally a, a very productive area. Once you have overhang hanging uh, branches of trees and so on over the hole, it's even better. Um, the rivers we catch in um, that are that are a bit dirty. The Southern African rivers are a bit dirty. They're not like the Alaskan or American rivers. Um, the catfish tend to use more of the feeling sensation or the feeling senses to catch their prey. Vibration, for instance, would be what well, vibration and flavor would be would be the preferred method of of hunting. Seeing that the eyes of the catfish are are very underdeveloped. I say underdeveloped, but the colored beads that I've showed you earlier on um, is sometimes more successful. We found that the fluorescent bead um, with the same strip has produced more fish than, for instance, the red bead and the black bead, um, and explained the reasons why. But let's get back to the senses of the catfish, the whiskers of the catfish, uh, the smelling of the catfish, the, 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 the nose, and obviously the, the, the body uh, line of the catfish would detect um, any vibration, or any particle. Um, the whiskers of the catfish, as far as I'm concerned, is totally underestimated. Um, and uh, we know that they use them to feel vibration in the water. The whiskers also has got a very, very um, um, fine um, ability to detect particles of blood and bait um, in the river itself. It is used in very same in the same fashion as, for instance, the African cats, the leopard and the lion and the serval cats with the long whiskers that you see and the and the serval, exactly the same way as used by the catfish, but just under it is, it is also said that the catfish um, have swallowed many a small babies that are left in small pools or that are being watched by their mothers, by the local people. Um, the local people also believe that they are a snake or a monster snake or a half snake, half man um, in the lower Orange River. Um, I think it is large catfish that is seen below the Ukhropis waterfalls, um, catfish that are huge um, and speculated to be above the 80 kilogram range, um, patrol the waters below the waterfalls and swallow and eat every dead mammal that flows down the waterfall, that are dropped down the waterfall, um, any fish that are disorientated by the waterfall and are dropped um, to below the waterfalls. The temperature range of the of the catfish, um, very very tolerant of, of high temperatures and, and probably the most tolerant of all the all the African fish when it comes to warm water. Um, most fish has got a, a, a a low temperature and high temperature level. Uh, for instance, if it gets to the 28s and 30s, very little fish in, in, in Africa, for instance, um, like to eat and they, they go very, um, they go basic, they basically go lame um, in waters below 8, 5 degrees Celsius, that is besides the carp and, and in the higher areas of, of South Africa, the, the trout. Um, the catfish, however, we found on, on, on warm days where where all the fish um, tend to sit still and lie still, they don't eat, they don't move, the catfish start to move. I think it is also the catfish that are, that are so clever that um, it realizes that the fish cannot get away, it, it doesn't move, it is, it is slow and the catfish just basically move in slow motion from one spot to the other and just swallow fish. We found that they are indeed the most productive in days where there's 40 40 degrees Celsius, 35, 40 and even higher degrees Celsius. Very difficult to catch them then because on 45 degrees Celsius no man um, in his right senses wants to stand in the sun and fish. We've tried it many occasions. We've tried it with guys that are fit, 
that are strong and tough and it's it's very difficult um, where we fish as well there's not a lot of shade and you need to do the fishing in daytime obviously in the sun at night it's it's a bit better but like I say the cat like and and, uh, and prefer very very warm temperatures they they go on the feet at night um, the catfish would would start hunting they would come into the shallows where they would the medium to small size catfish they would come in and hunt on the smaller fish that naturally would move in, into the shallow waters at night like like most fishermen have observed um, and the bigger the catfish uh, the deeper it would hunt in other words relative to the small fish um, the small cat that would hunt in in say a 10 centimeter uh, deep water the big cat would would hunt for instance in hip, hip deep water um, like I've explained into into the rapids for the larger yellow fish um, of, of say two kilogram and the mudfish of, of one kilogram and so on the the catfish's uh, whiskers we talked about the head the flat head is um, as far as I'm concerned of, of, um, is is there for a reason it is it is built like a Ferrari it's built like a Porsche in front it is there for speed it is there uh, to help with resistance against uh, fast flowing rivers the catfish can basically at the bottom lie in, in water that is that is flowing so fast that you can't put your foot in ankle deep water you put your foot in it'll take it away the cat will lie dead still because the head um, and the and, and, and the head of a 40 kilogram catfish the nose is basically as sharp as my fingers in front here so once it lies on the bottom the water actually presses it onto the bottom and um, it is for its size probably the most streamlined fish that you could get um, therefore also um, one of the reasons that I would regard them as um, um, or not just me uh, arguably it's regarded as probably the most successful freshwater fish in the world um, we'll talk about the amount of species uh, later but the cat's head um, I stand in amazement to see how the cats of 30 kilogram can go right up to the side of the water put its sharp mouth in here and catch the smallest fish without you standing on the side seeing the fish so if that's the water and that's the the, the bank and that is 10 centimeters a 30 kilogram catfish will go with its flat head without you seeing it you'll just see the whiskers sticking out and it'll grab a little fish uh, swimming in this area right on the side very successful it can thus eat crabs it can eat snakes it can eat uh, little lizards uh, little leg ones that sit on the side and therefore the size of the catfish the size of the catfish is related to the amount of food it ate um, over the millennia the bigger the fish uh, the bigger the food source and the bigger um, the bigger prey it would prey on the elephant is not that big um, uh, because it wants to be that big is that big because it ate so much over the millennia the catch um, the cat's back muscle is probably probably the most strongest um, of all fish for, well probably the, it is the biggest uh, back muscle of, of all fish uh, it's got huge strips along the back to wiggle the head um, to break pieces of, of meat of animals that lie dead in, in, in the waters um, anyone that knows Africa and that has seen a dead animal lying in the water if the crocodiles don't get to it the catfish will certainly demolish it um, very strong back muscles and a 20 kilogram catfish that turns its head um, and hits a man on the on the lower leg can certainly break it with one turn of its head anyone that tries to hold or tried to hold a catfish on its one hand of 10 kilograms in the mouth um, when it starts to move or to jump um, is a strong man We've grabbed 30 kilogram fish, 35 kilogram fish, hold on to them and try and wrestle them in shallow water. And I tell you, you come off second every time. Um, I would also believe that if a 40 kilogram catfish gets hold of your leg in the water, there's absolutely no way that you would um, get your leg out, number one, and uh, number two, get loose from the catfish if you don't have a, a knife. Or anything in that regard to remove or to stab the catfish we use a um, sliding sinker um, 
on to a, about a meter, up to a meter long piece of terminal um, or 130 pound um, terminal wire uh, with a swivel tied to the main line, a sliding sinker. Uh, the sinker will be tied, like I say, um, it can either be the rock, the natural rock, or, or the normal sinker. It will be tied with a, with a thin piece of wire so that if that gets stuck, seeing that the cat is fighting on the bottom, the fish doesn't get stuck and die. For instance, the sinker will almost always get caught and it can thus be broken off and the fish be fought, uh, fish fought without, without the sinker stuck to the bottom to obstacles. Um, the sliding sinker, we use good swivels um, and we make sure that um, the bait can actually slide, seeing that when the catfish starts biting, um, we tend to give it time to actually swallow before we actually strike. Um, that is the most critical, critical or crucial part of catching a catfish, is the initial biting, um, and it's and it's debatable. Some people believe that once it swallows the fish, you can strike. The others say it needs to move, so you need to hear the reel or the, or the indicator or the hooter, for instance, for quite some time before you can strike. Uh, we've seen that it, if it takes the fish uh, by the head uh, and it hasn't hooked itself and it starts moving, it, it doesn't tend to swallow it. It'll, If the bait lies still and there's no other fish in the area that, for instance, would fight the territory or, or compete in that specific pool, it is much more relaxed. It would go up to the bait and it will swallow it at first and you can strike straight off. Um, we've lost more fish allowing the fish to run for quite some time, believing that it is busy swallowing while it moves away. The moment it takes the bait and there's any resistance, the catfish holds on that specific bait and it moves like that. Um, we've had huge fish that grab onto the tail of a fish and actually hold on to that fish until it gets to right on the side in front of you and it, lose, it just uh, leaves the bait without the hook being very or anywhere close to the mouth of it. So it's very strong, it can hold onto the fish on the backside and you can pull it in and it can put up a fight exactly the same as when it's hooked. So that is a, a debatable issue. It depends, number one, I would say, on the, on, the, on the competition in the area. If there's two big cats that compete for a deep pool, and we've seen where during the spawning season it would, for instance, chase one uh, the one cat would chase another cat right out of the water because it's very territorial in, cer in certain areas or, or certain times of the year. So when there's competition in a specific pool that you're fishing in, they would be more jittery and they, when they get to a fish, they would grab it and run. And once again, not necessarily grab it and swallow it correctly. Um, that is a matter of taste. You'll get to know um, once you caught or hook up to two or three fish what is happening in the area. Um, once again, um, the resistance, you shouldn't feel any resistance when it bites. I've seen just the opposite where if it does bite and it feels a little bit of resistance, it maybe uh, thinks that it's going to get away and it immediately swallows it. So once again, it's either the one or the other. Um, as you fish, um, the one's method would, would clearly be uh, more successful than the, than the other and then one would, would switch to either striking it straight away or letting it run. Letting it run is, is the, the, riskier, the riskiest part of the fishing, seeing that as soon as the cat grabs hold of something, it like any leopard or lion would like to move to the closest tree, to take it into a tree or to lie in a bush to eat it where the hyenas can't get to it or, or any other cat or predator can get to it. The cat below the water is exactly the same, that's why it's called a cat, because of the whiskers, the behavior in Africa under the water is exactly the same as a leopard or a lion. Once it gets hold of the, uh, the bait, it moves straight away to where it's protected, where it can swallow the bait without the other catch, uh, or, or cats grabbing hold of that bait um, and, and removing it from its mouth. Uh, By allowing that line to thus move out, every 10 centimeters that the, the catfish 
moves the reel without you striking is a potential uh, 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 chance or increases the probability of you getting getting hooked. Uh, the cap will go and lie underneath a, a obstacle like a tree stump or a rock uh, or it will move into the bushes or the shallows uh, where there's branches once again to, to eat in peace um, or to swallow his piece of meat. So that's that's the standoff and that's the gamble you take with catfish in our rivers once again uh, once you take in your fish you make sure that that the line um, that you're going to fight the fish if the river for instance flows in front of you um, and you know that there's a drop off of rocks or there's branches lying between you and the fish you'd rather let the fish run down you go down and fight the fish from below the obstacle because the campsite is um, is um, is preferred obviously most of the times the campsites is not necessarily where the fish are so so to set up the camp where everyone is comfortable um, one will have to go in and drop the, the the bait off much further from the campsite um, just make sure that there's no obstacle between you and the fish you can either use the the swivel that I've explained along your embankment and then across the river by some ball bearing or some mechanism that you fight it uh, across the river 200 meters from below you um, or you can run down to the specific spot where as soon as you get hooked down get into the raft or get into the canoe and fight it from from, from above talking about fighting the catfish from above or from the raft um, probably the most adventurous way of fishing in Africa is to fish for, for catfish and even medium sized catfish of, of 10, 12, 13 and 15 kilograms from 12 to 15 meters above where you've hooked into it and not allowing the clutch or the gear system to run um, but basically remove it with brute force um, very nice sport is to to take a stand-up marlin rod of 150 pound for instance 120 pound uh, uh, kit it out with 130 pound line and once you hooked into the cat you got to hold on and fight with brute force absolutely amazing power that the cats portray in that short distance there's no stretch on the line it is just your power and the cat power to hook into a 35 kilogram catfish or a 40 kilogram catfish with that same gear very difficult a lot of the orange river folk will tell you that um, when it grabs hold of you and you're standing on a canoe it'll take you many meters down river before you can you can even start to turn the head of the cat um, short distance fishing in other words going to the other side of, of of the river or at night going to just above the deep hole above the shoulder uh, fish from there drop the fish down uh, the bait down uh, just above to where the catfish lies um, very adventurous fishing at night very difficult fishing at night um, it's dirty it's cold um, it's hard um, but boy oh boy it's it's like hunting a, a leopard or a lion very little guys have got the energy left after a days of catfishing to still do that at night but some guys like to live at night and uh, and they have a lot of success fishing that way I was walking by the